Well, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Adria. I'm Adria. This is Deetra. And we are here today to talk to you about creating safe spaces for people yeah. to be brave. Um, I am, I just want to first off also say thank you for being here, um, for showing up. We're going to talk a little bit about that some more today. Um, and we look forward to being able to connect with you and to have other conversations. So I yes. think I'm supposed to use this clicker. I think you're go. supposed to use a clicker. And I have my, um, you see, I have my little security blanket here right. to keep with me. Awesome. So one of the things that we like to talk about it is it only takes one small change to make a big difference, right? And um, that is all it takes to have actually a big result. We are looking for ways that we can just do little small things to impact in a really big way individually people and um, in a big way our communities. And so in our work with One Small Change, we try to help deliver what we call a both-in experience. I don't know about you, but most of us are used to either or, a yes, no. And this binary way of thinking about things actually gets us in trouble. If you don't know, I'm a clinical psychologist. It actually takes five positives to outweigh one negative. So if we really want to be making a change, we've got to open up this idea of being both in and help people have experiences and understand that all of our experiences are actually important. And we're up here together because we believe that we become our fullest best selves in relationship to one another. We believe we get impacted by each other's stories, right? Because stories impact people more than fact. And we want to be a model for what it means to be co-leaders and co-partners in being able to heal racism in our lifetime. Yes. So experiences are very interesting. And one of my favorite to talk to people about is the experience of family. People will often say, we treat everybody here like family. Well, my question is gonna be, whose family are we talking about? <laughs> is that my mom's side, is that my dad's side? Because I may not necessarily come into that space in the same kind of way. So if we're not careful about how we use our words, think about experiences, invite people, then we may actually be um, you know, losing out on the best parts of all of us. Yes, and we know also that um, sharing those stories and being together makes it more sustainable, working together. So we are moving now to, ooh, God. How did we come bus. to be here? Yes. Well, so Deetra did get thrown under the bus. I got thrown under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's her there. <laughs> this, was, this was not necessarily my first idea of being here today. Um, but I'm really grateful because we get to do this together. Yes. And what I prefer to do is really see and create spaces where we are trying to facilitate conversation. So that's part of why we are here sharing this together. And because, you know, we are two black women, if you didn't notice that. <laughs> Um, and we have these experiences that sometimes don't get told and that are not always understood. And where racism is something that people get really anxious about and want to not address. But we don't have a choice about addressing that. So I wanted to share a little bit about um, our stories and how we came to be doing this work. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna first let Andrea Go. Yes. So I'm going to share Deetra's story. So Deetra grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, a place where Dr. King was assassinated. She grew up in Whitehaven, that is predominantly a black area. She was bused to school in Germantown, and she found herself, while she saw people who looked like her on the playground, in the classes that she was in, she was typically one of the only black women there. And so she wanted to figure out how could she live her life and not be angry and also be a part of the solution. So I've been doing this work for a very long time, trying to create spaces for people to come together and talk. And Andrea, um, in doing our work together, um, has really found a voice in being able to be an advocate she has three beautiful children, and one of her sons was accused of a crime and was actually um, found to not be guilty of that crime. But when they went to meet with the judge at the end, a judge who was also black, 
the judge said that she wanted to charge him anyway because his hair had not been done that day. Now, we could all be very shocked by that and very angry by that story. But it's important that we tell those stories and recognize that all of us are impacted by racism, not just one group or another. And that we also all have an opportunity to find a way to bring those stories to light. And the reason I'm here today, because it was Dietra's work that gave me hope. Because you can imagine that I was completely overwhelmed in that moment by a system that wanted to put my son in jail, even though the people who accused him admitted to lying on the stand. But it's through her work that I was able to find hope and find a place uh, where one person can actually make a change. I can actually impact people by sharing my stories and other people can impact me by allowing me to hear their stories. So one of the ways I've been able to do that is that I did my dissertation on something that is called the Chicago Dinner Model. It brings people together to talk about their experiences of race and racism, where I like to say that we use the forks to eat and not hurt each other. Um, and one of my favorite stories to share, actually, as we were hearing about the NASA app here um, person, is that we had a NASA scientist in our workshop, uh, well, in one of our dinners, actually, and he said, suddenly in the middle of like our dinner, you know, this isn't rocket science. It's harder. We got somebody on the moon. Right. And yet we haven't been able to figure this out. That's so it's right. complex. It's a very complex situation. And yet, I think when we come together, we have opportunities to figure out how to get there. So one of the things that we are doing currently is actually working with the city of Decatur and helping to create what we call Decatur Dinners. The dinners are built on the Chicago Dinner Model. They also have an opportunity to have a play, which is by Out of Hand Theater. And it helps people come together, have dinner, have an experience and share their stories together. So we are always um, being invitational. We're also working with other places to do similar events like this all over the, um, all over the city and many different places. Yes, and we like to say that we're always calling the choir members together. You know, someone says, aren't you just preaching to the choir? Well, yes, because the choir needs to rehearse. And I always say... <laughs> Get on the same page, right? Be right. Two. <laughs> okay. Know that we're all together. Let's do right. this. And when you rehearse, other people can hear you singing, and if they're of like mind, they can join you too. Have you ever <laughs> known people who go to church that are not really part of that dom denomination, but they want to go because the choir is good? Exactly. So let's all get together on that. Yes. yes. We're always doing that. Let's sing. And I'm a <laughs> singer, and I always say, just bring the people who love to sing. That's right. Right. The other part of that is that sometimes we feel like we need to go to where the biggest problem is instead of actually working with the people who are showing up. It takes courage to show up. And that was the thing that I learned in my, my research and all of my work is that I want to first thank everybody who made the effort to show up. And if we can start there, then we have an opportunity to attract everybody else into what we want to be doing. Yes, and we are witnessing your bravery today because you showed up, right? It takes courage to show up for this conversation. So another key piece here that I've learned over time is that most of us are very familiar with debate and not so familiar with what actually brings us together, which would be dialogue. So we want to share with you a few key markers of the difference between dialogue and debate. Dialogue is collaborative. Two or more sides work together toward common understanding. Debate is oppositional. Two sides oppose each other and attempt to prove each other wrong. Dialogue causes introspection on one's own position. Debate causes critique of the other position. Dialogue reveals assumptions for re-evaluation. Debate defends assumptions as truth. Dialogue creates an open-minded attitude, an openness to being wrong, and an openness to change. And debate creates a closed-minded attitude, a determination to be right. So I was on the debate team. <laughs> so imagine that this was like groundbreaking for me. <laughs> In most places we go, I share, there's actually a longer list, but we just wanted to share a few of these with you. Um, I'm always asking this question, who here is good at debate? 
or who here knows that you start off in dialogue and you end up in debate, okay? We did a workshop recently and one of the gentlemen said, do you know when you learn to dialogue is when you've been married for seven years? I'm not sure I ever learned that. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true, we're always working at it. So when we think about this work and what we're trying to do, is to recognize that it is very important that we actually create spaces for people to develop this very important skill. That we have lots of spaces in which we get to observe debate and we get to learn how to debate, but we don't necessarily have spaces where we create dialogue. So we're hoping that we are inviting people to participate and recognize that there's this special sauce that we've learned in actually helping our people, uh, everyone move forward. And one of the first things is that we want to actually listen. Yes. And listen, wanna, listen, listen to understand. Listen to understand and not to form an argument against, yes. which is what debate would be, <laughs> which I'm very good at. <laughs> I'm a psychologist and people will always say, you know, I know you're supposed to listen to me, but would you also believe me? And that is something that I work to do. Work with people where they're at. The other thing we've learned, and I do this because I am from Memphis, and I like to say, no fixing. Yes. Nobody wants to be fixed. Yes. That's the first thing. So we just need to let people come, have their story, put their story on the table, and let the story just sit there, and then add your story to it. We don't necessarily have to correct that other person's story. If we let them get it out, there might be an opportunity that they're gonna be willing to hear your story and take it in. Yes, and to be curious, be it, have an open mind, an openness to hear something that you may not agree to agree with at all. Yes. Just open to hear, allow them to share their story with you so that they may be open to hear yours. So curiosity is one of my favorite things to focus in on, and we want to wrap up by just encouraging you to check out the Decatur Dinners um, event that we are having on August 25th. We want to invite you to come and speak with us and share your stories and know that we are here to listen and to believe and help us all not be about fixing. Yes, we have a thousand people coming together on August 25th, all yes. on one night in a hundred different dinners all across the city of Decatur. And we need a lot of people there. So we would love for you to come and sign up and be a part of the conversation. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.